the next idea in section 2.1, really the last idea, is something called a z-score. Z-score, that's a hyphen. And a z-score is also sometimes called a standardized score. And if you ever from now on see the word standardized or standard, think z-score. And really, what is a z-score? A z-score is how many standard deviations away you are from the mean. From the mean. So I want to do an example first, and then I'll actually kind of do the formula second. So just an example, let's say you take a test, and for this test the mean is 80, and the standard deviation is 10. And notice I'm using the Greek letters because when I talk about a whole test, I'm talking about the whole population. And let's say that on this test, I'm going to use X for your score, you get a, 90, a 96. And so the question is, what is that 96 converted to a Z-score? Okay? So we use Z for Z-score. Well, how far are you away from the mean? Well, you're 96 minus 80. You're 16 points. That's an 80. You're 16 points away from the mean. But, but 16 points is kind of meaningless because it's... The standard deviation is 10, so you actually get 16 over 10, so you are 1.6 standard deviations away from the mean. So we would say that your z-score is 1.6. Okay? That calculation I really just did just leads to a formula, which is the formula for a z-score, which, here, let's put it in a big box because it's going to be so important. The z-score formula is x minus mu over sigma. That's the new important z-score formula. Z is the z-score, x is the individual observation, mu is the mean of the population, sigma is the standard deviation of the population. Okay, so how might you use the z-score formula? Well, let's say, for example, you've got two people. Let's call them uh, Jack and Jill. So on a test, Jack gets uh, 80, and Jill gets, I don't know, uh, 60. Okay, But what's interesting is who did better on the test? Well, you might say, well, Jack does, but they're different tests, right? They're different tests, different classes. Okay, so it turns out that on, in Jack's class, the mean on the test was uh, 85, and the standard deviation was 15. Whereas in Jill's class, the mean was 70, but the standard deviation was 20. Actually, let's make it 25. 25, okay? So what does that, first of all, tell you? It tells you the average was better um, in Jack's class. The fact that this standard deviation is bigger means the scores were more spread out. So the question is, who did better? When I say who did better, I'm not saying who got the higher score. I'm saying who did better relative to the mean on the test, the way the other people did compared to their classmates. Well, this is the classic situation where you would use a z-score. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert both these scores to z-scores, and then we can compare the z-scores, because the z-score is a standard score, right? It, can, it tells you how many standard deviations away you are. So what's Jack's z-score? So Jack's z-score is, we'll use the formula, 80 minus 85 over 15 gets us negative 5 over 15 is negative... 0.33. And yes, z-scores can be negative. That just means your observation is less than the mean. What's Jill's z-score? Well, it's 60 minus 70 over 25 gets us negative 10 over 25. Turns out to be negative 0.4. Okay. Well, whose z-score is better? Well, they're both bad, right? They're both less than the mean, but Jack's is a little bit better. So we would say that Jill's is further away from the mean, okay, because it's more, it's more standard deviation away, so who did better here? The answer is Jack, okay? Um, one little kind of thought, of, if the z-score is, if your z-score is positive, what does that mean? It means you did, you're above the mean. Right? Any positive z-score means you're so many standard deviations larger than the mean. If your z-score is exactly zero, which can happen, 
you are the mean, exactly the mean. In other words, how many standard deviations are you from the mean? Zero. And if your z-score is negative, then you are below the mean. Right? Um, and it's the last thing our book talks about quickly with z-scores is that you should really only use z-scores when you're talking for the most, not, you can always calculate a z-score. You can always calculate it no matter what the distribution look like. Calculate. But really we only use z-scores most commonly when you're talking about some sort of symmetric distribution of some kind. I mean, while yes, you can do it, z-scores for something like this are probably not as useful. Or I mean, useful is maybe another thing, but not as not kind of not as common. Okay, so that's z scores.